Here we go. Welcome to the Profit Tool Belt podcast, just for construction and contracting business owners who are interested in the business of the contracting business. If you want to work smarter and not just harder, you're in the right place. My name is Dominic Rubino, and I'll be your host. Today's guest is Wesley Matthews. We're going to talk about simple marketing to get customers. Now, first, what's this podcast all about? Well, I show contractors like you how to get back in control of their construction business, even if they don't know where to start. The truth is you don't need a lot of extra time or a business degree to build a profitable and solid contracting business. You just need simple systems, the simple systems that give you quiet confidence. Now, for too long, our industry has been keeping secrets, and I'm here to put an end to that. On this show, you're going to learn how to use simple systems in three different places, in the office, on a job site, and in your shop. And more important than that, I also show people the secrets of business success that all come back to how to have a mindset of growth, how to work smarter, not just harder. And to that end, got a couple of dad jokes for you. Oh yeah. Some of you tune in just for the dad jokes. Why dad jokes? Why bad jokes? Why dad jokes poorly delivered with poor timing? Well, I want to get you laughing. I actually looked up the definition of mindset on the internet machine uh, because I talk about mindset a lot. I thought, let's see what other people have to say. Mindset is how you think, what you feel, and what you do. Your mindset impacts how you make sense of the world and yourself. It is, it's the operating system for success, folks. It really is. So have your mindset in the right headspace, literally. And uh, I do that by telling a couple dad jokes. And look, I know you're going to take these jokes and reuse them, and you're going to fall flat on your face, and you're going to deliver them with poor timing. Good for you. Deliver them with confidence smile to yourself and move on. Um, because we're going to be talking to Wesley about marketing, I got a couple of search engine optimization jokes. Yeah. Believe it or not, there are there's a whole category of SEO jokes. So here's a couple of, for you. Uh, what do SEOs use when they go fishing? Link bait. Oh, you can use that one on the boat with the kids. Why do SEOs love the farmer's market? Well, there's lots of organic content. You can use that one when you and your wife are at the farmer's market. Why do SEOs like monkeys? Long tails. If you don't understand that one, talk to your SEO expert. That makes a lot of sense. Um, speaking of the explanation of search engine optimization and the world of marketing, which we're going to be talking to Wesley about in a second, here's the best explanation of marketing I've ever heard. And it certainly isn't the university textbook version, but it's something that'll stick in your mind. So here's a definition for you of what marketing means. Imagine that the circus is coming to town and you paint a sign saying circus coming to the fairground this Saturday. Well, that's advertising. Now, if you take that sign and you put that sign on the back of an elephant and you walk it into town, well, that's promotion. Now, if the elephant happens to walk through the mayor's flower bed, that's publicity. And if you can get the mayor to laugh about it publicly, well, that's public relations. Now, if you thought about your local market, what your local market would appreciate, decided on a circus, and then put together a strategy to bring that to town, well, that's marketing. I hope you like that little definition. Listen, if you're a business owner who's curious to find ways to run your business profitably, to have more time off, do the things you love, uh, build a team you can rely on, grow a company that one day you could sell or pass on to somebody else or Heck, just live off the cash flow. You are in the right place. I'm a business owner. I'm also a business coach. And the only people I work with are construction and contracting business owners who want to get to the next level in their business. And I host this podcast because one day I really want to be your business coach. As a matter of fact, I have a team of business coaches that I have personally hand selected. And I have very high expectations for the people that join my team. And I'm proud of every single one of them. So as you listen to this podcast, Ask yourself if you think one day me and my team might be the right tool in your toolbox to help you get to the next level. All right. With that being said, let me go into business coach mode right now. I'm going to challenge you. In this episode, you're going to hear something or learn something or realize something. But on that, I want you to take action in the next 24 hours. And then I want you to pay attention on how that improves your business or your life. Taking action makes the difference. If you are in contractor strategy group, uh, today, just so happens, I posted how uh, one of our clients found $1,100 by tracking back a profit leak. It's about $380 a year that has been running for three years in his business, and he's never grabbed it. 
He just grabbed it now, just in time, by the way. He just canceled that subs- subscription subscription in time before it auto-renewed for the next year. What would it mean to your family to bring home another 400 bucks, to apply $400 to a machinery or tool payment or a truck payment, or bring it home and put it in the kitty so that you're, you and your wife can take a, a trip she's always dreamed of, or put it towards your kids or braces or whatever, whatever you want to do with that 400 bucks. What would it mean to you to have 400 bucks? What would it mean to you to find $400 on the ground? Well, that's what my client just did, right? He took action. He took action. He went and looked for the profit leaks. He found a profit leak, and now he gets to get that money back in his pocket. Anyways, I hope you know this podcast is built to educate, inform, and inspire you. So let me get into your head. I'm going to ask you an inspirational question. Are you happy being a contractor who runs a few crews, or are you ready to be a business person who just happens to run a construction company? By the end of today's episode, you'll know the answer. Let's get to it. Mr. Wesley Matthews. How are you, man? Good, Dominic. How are you? Good. Since you and I have met, we've probably, how many times have we been on the phone now? Six times? Yeah, about that. Yeah. Six, maybe seven. Yeah. We'll be sick of each other after this. Yeah, for sure. Pretty close. Yeah. Um, I'm glad to have you here. You and I know each other through a business club that we're in. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I was excited when I got introduced to you because you've got a marketing background and I don't know if you're hearing this from people. But regionally, I'm hearing some people say, hey, is there a slowdown going on? Like people are curious. So people aren't seeing it, but they're asking. And I've got other regions uh, across North America that are strong. They're good. They're booked out months in advance. Yeah. But some people are asking. Are you seeing the same thing? Yeah. You know, I always go back to like, like who's who's posing those questions, right? And what are their tactics and what are they doing? But yes, I, I am. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Whereas in the last, I don't know. For the last years and years, it's all been, I can't believe it's still going. Yeah. They're, they're still giving away free candy. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's definitely tightening up a bit for sure. Yeah. Well, so anyways, that's why I thought, what an interesting topic to have you come and talk on, on marketing, but you've also done something and I'm going to let you get to this, but you've also built and sold a company. Yeah. Now people sell their houses maybe yep. once or twice in their lifetime, but building and selling a company, that's rare. So hopefully we can touch on those things too. For sure. Love to share about that. Well, let me, uh, I'm going to start with this question. <clears throat> you ready? Ready. Wesley Matthews, who the heck are you? And how is it you come to be speaking to all these forward-facing contractors all over the world? Yeah, no, good question. I'm still asking myself that question, but <laughs> I, I think I, I think I earned a black belt in home services uh, because the company I started, High Level Marketing, launched that company in 2009. Um, predominantly was a website design development company mm. focused with organic search optimization and paid search. And I focused on home home services, contractors. There you go. So the reason why I fell in love with that is because, as you can see, I'm wearing somewhat of a T-shirt. I'm not oh, in a yeah. three-piece suit. So I'm very non-threatening to home contractors. I don't know, man. You look like a pretty big guy. I don't know how <laughs> non-threatening you are. But, you know. For me, I, I kind of went the corporate route, like as you should, right? Coming out of school, I went to community college. School wasn't my thing. I always went down the other path. Yeah. I felt like I just got along with home services. And honestly, at the time in 2009, like there wasn't, at least around me, right? Like the the, the iPhone just came out, social media, Facebook just started, mm. SEO started to become a thing. But what I was realizing is, there's not a lot of honest marketing companies or web companies in my area. Still the case. And, and every home service person I talked to, because I started in like BNI. So business networking where there's like 25 people sitting around a room. And it yeah. was like the roofer, the electrician, the this, the that. And from a search engine optimization standpoint, B to C, like plumbers, roofers, electrician. Yeah. They're searched like crazy, right? Like, and then this, I'm going back to 2009. So I'm like low hanging fruit. I don't like wearing suits. I'm in my mid twenties. People trust me. I'm 42 now. It goes back a little bit, but I just always felt comfortable around home services. I love the fact that to me, like they're always scrappier, scrappier in the sense of like, I'm going to make it happen. And a lot of these guys that I met that were super successful, they were really good at their craft, but they're like, Mm -hmm. dude, I gotta be honest, like with, with marketing, like I'm just faking through. I don't know what I'm doing. And I felt like this honor marketers. Yeah. I felt this honor to be like, I got it. Nice. And guess what? I'm not going to F you over. Right. Yeah. And that worked. And like we built that to several thousand 
contractors across the country. Oh, no way. It was that big. You had a couple big, of man. thousand contractors and you're yeah. doing SEO for them. Drive Always the would leads. do the website. Must must do the website. We had our own proprietary platform like WordPress. Right. So your website's going to be launched off our platform. couple of reasons. One, we can manage to and it was secure. Yeah. Because we had this illusion that people were actually going to log in and change their website. So as a contractor, go figure like none of them did. But we would do that for them. So it was a white glove offering and a lot of value because everybody paid a setup fee and a monthly reoccurring fee behind that. That's but again, normal, I'm talking right? past tense, but like I'm still a minority partner, shareholder, board member for high level marketing. So this company is still uh, in operation okay. and it's very successful. Um, but I just gave this white glove approach and, and treated home services mm. like nobody else did because I actually cared a little, uh, you know, about that. So and that was a niche. And plus two, it was just like, we could quantify results quickly. I could get companies ranked fast and I could get them leads. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, that's what we want. Quality so many marketing leads. companies that talk about all these things and spend 25 grand for this and 50 grand and they deliver jack shit. Nothing. You yeah. could work with us and we would look at it, evaluate. We ended up building some technology that was very predictable. So like depending in whatever area you were in, we could tell you with almost laser point precision how many leads you're going to get? Because mm. I mean, that's the biggest thing, right? Yeah, this we need SEO the leads, and we focus, need it's hocus ones. pocus. Like, pay this fee, and everybody's been doing that. And they're all burned. So I just took a different approach, and I love home service because I, I like to. I mean, as we're talking now, I just like to kind of you know go it's home services and like contractors in general are straight shooters, and I'm they, a straight shooter. They can call BS on me, and I can call BS on them, and nobody gets offended. We just keep going. So that's why I love home services, and I feel like you know. Yeah. I've earned my black belt. I've I've got my stripes because I've I've been through the war, man. I mean, I've I've worked with guys that had one truck that had a vision that scaled to over fifty trucks, hundreds of trucks, and I just I just pride myself on like just no bullshit. Just you ask me a question, I'm gonna give you the answer. If I don't know it, I'm gonna tell you and probably help you find the right answer. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah, and, and today we're here to talk about simple marketing, and I'm gonna take you off the online world, off the online world. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. When you look at, and when you look at success in marketing, is it a one bullet approach or is it multiple? Oh, you're shaking your head. Like what, what lay it, lay out the ideal strategy. If you were going to take a home remodeler from just getting by to being as busy as they wanted to be, I'll just, we'll keep it loose like that. So it's interesting. Like that question, I would have answered very differently, maybe even a year ago. Cause again, mm. I would always look to what's going on with your website, market. what's going yeah. on to your organic and your paid. Sure. The reality is I'll back that question up. I'll, I'll now ask that contractor, like, what do you actually want? Like, let's, let's, let's zoom out 10 years, three years. And they're yeah. like, what? Shut up. Like, I just need to do this now. I get that. But like, where do you want to take this business? Because that really depends on how I'm going to advise on the approach and what you mm-hmm. need to do. Because I'm, you know, when I, when I talk about simple, my goal with anybody, whether it's home services or whatever, what's your cost per lead and how do you build a predictable model? Because people will come and ask me, what should I do for this? What should I do for that? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I got to open the under the hood and then understand what the hell I'm working I, with. I appreciate you said that because it, it it feels ignorant to say, I don't know. But I say it all the time. I don't know. My new I favorite say, word. I don't know enough. It's my it's, favorite word now. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, there's a lot of humility that comes in. You and I were talking about this before the show with yeah. age. We just start yeah. to learn. We've just been around enough to go, Matt, hold on, put the brakes on. I'm like a little kid. I don't know. Tell me more. Why, 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 why? <laughs> but the reality is, you know, there's companies that can build a phenomenal website, or I'll give you a perfect example. There were industries early on that I could get ranked on Google at the mm-hmm. very top. I'm talking number one, two, and three position on Google. Mm. That would generate zero leads online. So I would get, and the reason why I share that, I was get people like, I needed to be ranked at the top of Google. I'm like, why? Well, that's where my customers are. Are they? Who's your customer? I don't know. What services are you marketing? Well, all of it. Well, let's get specific. Like Mm. just a lot of those basic fundamental questions are glazed over and people just want to like, you know, invest in this, invest in that. Then like six months later, they're all pissed off at their agency, pissed off at the world because I've spent money on this and it's bullshit. It doesn't work. It's like, well, maybe the agency is wrong. Maybe they're not. Maybe it's you. But if you peel back a couple layers, you can start to figure out like, okay, where do we place these bets? You know, so yeah. Yeah. So let's go back to that 
renovation yep. contractor today as we're recording this towards the end of 2023. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do I need to be doing? Because it's not just one thing. I, I I truly believe you have to have a multiple multi-pronged approach. Yeah. So if you're like a home remodeler, if that's mm-hmm. what you're asking, um, I'd be really big on number one. I don't care what you are. Google reviews are everything. Mm-hmm. Everything. And let me tell you why. And I'll use a specific home remodeler approach. Sure. I was inquiring about getting my basement finished. Mm-hmm. I looked at my pipeline of clients and the reviews were all mixed. So I have five kids at home and a wife and a dog. And I'm gone you know, during the day like I'm you know, sure. out there yeah. conquering the world, right? Um, so nine to five, let's just say I'm not home. So I had three big objections. I think it was three. I have to remember. Number one, if you're going to do my basement, it's going to take like 90 days and you're going to have to come in through my main floor, walk through my kitchen to come to my basement. Right. I don't like that. Number two, (laughs) my experience with contractors, they're, they're, you know, on the phone, there's cussing, there's smoking, right? I don't want that around my kids. They're young. Number three, people don't show up. It's just very blase player. And I'm like, that's what's in front of me. I meet this company. They're called Basements, fin- Finished Basements Plus in Michigan. Yeah. And I talked to the sales guy and I said, he's get doing whatever. I said, I have three things that I'm going to tell you that this is all I care about. You can even like F up the drywall. Like I don't even care. But these three things. And like they just, you know, really made sure and I was comfortable. Long story short, I, they hooked me up on Builder Trend, okay. which is like a project management yeah. software yeah, yeah, to yeah, deal yeah. with the customer. Yeah. Everything that they said they were going to do, you're never going to believe what happened. They did it. They fucking did it. <laughs> did it to the point of every day they left my house they literally vacuumed and they put this nice roll of stuff down i come home one day my kids are in the garage with their buddies there's two guys in there like tying up these fishing lures they're in my kids tackle box like having a great time brought them donuts and i'm just like oh my gosh this is a this is amazing and they had a phenomenal work product nice. i went to google and you can search it right now go to basements finished plus and i i i put that in google yeah. I got a call from the CEO like I don't even remember when. They've gotten so much business off that review. Because of the review. Because yeah. I got so intimate with it and said, Hey, I'm this busy guy and I'm probably yeah. important and blah, blah, blah. And this is what happened. Yeah. And like they kept sending me hundred dollar bills. And I'm like, Really? I don't, yeah, I was like, that was nice. kind of cool. But I'm like, yeah. you guys, I, I love referring people that just do great. That work. you can trust. And I look to myself, I'm like, what I'm feeling, I'll say it. I don't give a shit. Most people won't say. So I think a lot of people saw that review and were like, wow, this guy is like, if it's good enough for this Yahoo, it's probably good enough for me. And the reason why I stress that Google reviews people on home services, construction, yeah. that is the bread and butter. So even if you get a bad one, respond to it, call the customer, make amends, figure it out because that's what people are doing. Mm-hmm. So if, and again, I stress that because if that foundational thing is not done properly, doesn't really matter what you do because if you're driving people to your website, they're going to research you. If that's they are going to research you offline as well. Yeah, I, a lot of people will be like, "Why isn't my Facebook working? This agency sucks." Go look at your reviews. I wouldn't hire you with a ten foot pole. <laughs> you know, so that yeah, number fix your, one, fix your operations. Okay, number, so number two, one, yep, Google number reviews. one, Google reviews. Yep. Um, number two, I would say website because people are going to look at your website. Mm. You have to look kind of current. You you have to look like you're not a Craigslist Craigslist killer. Like my wife, like I, I don't know what the demographic is in different areas, but you know, there's 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 things out there like House Call Pro, there's Service Titan, there's these services yep. that can take a home service company and really refine their processes from a service mm-hmm. perspective. But people want to see your brand and, and the trust and the trucks and the shirts and the professionalism. Um, yeah. And again, like tying the the reviews to that website, because having a good website shows like you're going to take meticulous care of my home. Yeah, right? consistency. Um, and they are. show up in a broken truck. You. Yeah, if people. Yeah. If you show up in a broke truck, right, yeah. and it's just gross, and we all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm not going to let you through my. I'm not going to. I mean, I would never hire new millionaires. Yeah. If you have a truck where the numbers are falling off, it was wrapped, but it's just de- de- you know. Oh God! Cra- yeah. yeah, I've never seen one where the wrap is coming off, but I can imagine if it looks, if the truck doesn't look good or at least passable, 
let's say yep. neutral, it, it's yeah, I, I would have serious problems. So, you know, responding to all reviews, even social media. Look, I mean, I'm 42. My oldest is almost 15. He's constantly glued to TikTok. Things are changing, right? Now, yeah. Facebook is pegged as like the old person's social media. Oh, crazy. But, you know, making sure you have a presence, making sure you're responding when people comment. Um, it's just super important. Yeah. Um, what you know, about- I used to tell people that back in 09, I would be like to a home service company, I would say, Mm. because they'd be like, well, like, you know, our website, you know, Julie's sister's cousin's brother's friend manages that. And I would say, come on, like, that's crazy. Like, you're a real company and, you know, you need to have real infrastructure behind it. Today, that person can manage that home service company very well because of how how the world has evolved since 2009 and remotely, all these widgets out there and individual things you can buy to promote. So, it's well, very like they can manage it if they actually manage it, not if they did it for you as a favor. Correct. I've had this so many times. My niece did the website. She's supposed to fix it, but she's at college. And I don't yeah. know, maybe when she comes back at Christmas, we'll ask her. Yeah. That is not a working strategy. No. Uh, I was going to ask when you when you say, you know, Google reviews are important. Responding to all reviews for sure. Um, the website, because people are going to look you up. How do you feel about the need for LinkedIn, especially if you're trying to go up market? Yeah, I for home services, like I I don't think it's super important. A, a couple of different things. One, if you're gonna do it, you need to make sure that it's completed. So mm-hmm. like the pictures there, but that 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 almost creates Pandora, opens up Pandora's box too, because I've also heard and seen, well, this person's only connected to thirty people. I don't know if I should trust them. Uh, I'd rather not even see the LinkedIn profile and have a problem searching it for it than seeing a, a somebody only connected to thirty people. Yeah, I guess I look at it a different way because LinkedIn LinkedIn has gone downhill in the last couple of years where so many people from overseas are trying to ping me all the time. They're like, I follow you. We should be great friends. I'm like, he didn't even spell the sentence right. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I would look somebody up on LinkedIn and it would just yeah. be, it wouldn't be, it's not the be all and end all, but it's a data source. Like, oh, this guy's on LinkedIn. That's going to take me out market because if I'm selling, if my ideal client is executives, business yep. owners, dentists, lawyers, yep. judges, they're going to have a LinkedIn profile and I yep. should have one is my thought. Now I see your point. It's like anything. If you're going to, if you're going to use the tool, be all in on the tool and don't go in on it until you're ready. Yep. Yeah. And to that point, I, I think honestly, mo- more importantly for me would be Facebook and Instagram since old people are on Facebook and old people have the money to do they're the, the construction like before and afters, right? Uh, get, yeah. get, yeah, get vulnerable, right? Like introduce yourself, like, you know, hey, I'm Wes and blah, blah, blah. Like, I got a guy locally, a friend, a, a, you know, EO guy who has a mm-hmm. company called Brickworks. He's constantly out there pushing content. And I think the reality is, you know, he, you just, you'll do business with a guy. Like, he's a likable guy, right? And the stuff he's talking about, he puts good stuff out there. So, to your multi prong approach, right? When people are seeing mm-hmm. whether it's a billboard or just, you know, they're, and again, I, I love, I love remarketing. So retargeting and remarketing, yeah, it's, you know, so for, for anybody listening, that's like, what is that to me? It's like the most inexpensive way to brand, which is if you can get somebody to click on your website, Mm -hmm. right. Say you have a meeting with customer X and you can get them to your website, your ad will follow them for like 30 to 90 days. So that after you leave, they're going to go on. Bravo. Sports com, scores or yeah, whatever. whatever it is. Yeah. And your home contractor ad's gonna pop up and they're gonna be like, these guys wow, are they're, everywhere. They're a big deal. I didn't yeah. even notice until I met him. Wow, he was nice. Wow. And the other thing I would say to do that it has nothing to do with anything about spending money on, follow up appropriately. Get back to people when you tell them to. Like if they're getting a quote and you say, Hey, I'm gonna get it back within 24 hours or X, do get it say. back. Follow do you mean, up. Do you mean do as you say? Is that what you? Yeah, I mean it's 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 I, free. Listen, the, one of the problems in our industry is communication, and I think because yeah. a lot of us are guys, guys are not necessarily great communicators. Yeah, that's going to be a limiting factor. Get back to people. Te- I mean, texting is not the greatest, but communicate with people somehow. And and as you know, the faster you respond to somebody, the faster it is, the more likely it is you're going to get the deal. There's so if you've technology got incoming out there. leads. Oh, okay, actually, what technology is it? Well, there's technology out there called missed call text back. 
Mm. So that's a little Missed nugget for home call, service. text back. Oh, yeah, I'm let me, that down. Yeah, let me share what that is. So yeah. again, I have experience working with thousands of home service companies. Mm. So you would always get in this battle of like, I'm not getting leads or our phone's not ringing. And we would track the calls through a service. And sometimes it was painful because the leads that were coming in, mm-hmm. nobody's answering the phone. Ouch. They're and let me tell that. you, like, and let me say something as a consumer. I'm not leaving you a voicemail. I'm going to go down Google and call the next guy with five star reviews. And if they answer the phone and treat me good, you're done. I, I'm not, I'm, I don't care about your callback. However, there's a piece of technology called missed call text back. And what this is, if I call that business, this home service business, and they don't answer, it's going to text me back as soon as I hang up. And it's going to say, sorry, we missed your call. We're out building the best effing roof known to whatever. Yeah. Your call is important to us. How can we help? And what that does, it starts an engagement now. I'm a texter, right? So I'll say, hey, I was actually looking for a quote for this, that, and the other. And like this system now starts to automate this. And now you start to capitalize on opportunities that you never even knew came through. Yeah. And somebody out there right now is saying, I wonder how much that costs. Let me answer the question for you. I don't care. Yeah. If it gets me one, it's costing you not to have it. If, if it so costs kind of you funny. 12 bucks a month, if it yeah. costs you 12 bucks a month to have the service, it's going to cost you 12,000 a year not to have the service. I don't even know the service, but I can tell you that one there for increasing conversion rate, it's one of the cheapest places you can make a huge impact in your business. And so if anybody's worried guess about what, sales, and, use these yeah. tips. And guess what happens? Now when that phone number is in your system, right? What happened here? This is my big thing from my experience with home service companies. And and look, I'm talking about this is this is a a kind of a wide issue. Customers want leads. That's what they want. But the reality is, let's just say out of four leads that come in, I'll ask anybody, everybody, how many are going to close? They're like, well, we'll close all four of them. Okay, great. You're going to close one, maybe. What are you doing with those other three? There's no follow-up. There's no nothing. You do like a missed callback and you like start to nurture clients, right? Mm -hmm. And and you'll retext them back weekly or monthly. And like those clients, those three you missed, May not have had a good experience with somebody else, but if you stay in front of them and reach back out through SMS and email marketing, retargeting them, just kind of building out marketing, little simple Mm. tools, that to me is so effective. A lot of home service companies haven't even thought about that because they just, there's nobody out there preaching from the mountaintop saying, here's the keys to success. It's typically agencies, buy my website, spend money and paid, spend money in organic. Well, that's what I, that's what, you know, that's, it's, you know, so- a lot of, I guess, what I'm recommending are like simple out of the box things that aren't very much money or they're no money at all, honestly. Yeah, pretty. It's it's straightforward, but there's a lot of strategy behind it. Just because it's just because it sounds easy doesn't mean it is, or it doesn't mean that right. it's not useful. Yeah. What about offline? You know, I, I'm I'm a believer in um, having some offline presence as well. Things like uh, a wrapped vehicle, although I understand yeah. it's expensive up front. It's going to cost you five six grand to wrap. Uh, direct mail. I loved, I like farming a neighborhood, like taking an owner, uh, a neighborhood and owning it from a marketing angle. I'm going to mail them. I'm going to have signs. I want them to be driving around going, this Rubino guy's everywhere. We have to use him. What's your thought on that offline? Yeah, I like that too. It it just, for me, it just depends on where they're at and their company and, and what type of budget do they have and like what stage of the business they're in. I think to that point of when they're a little bit more established, they have the the budget and the time capacity to go with that. Cause I always like to marry, I like to marry that concept with then the retargeting. So mm-hmm. like get like, what do you want somebody to do? Like, let's get them to your landing page or like, let's let them get an offer. And then from that offer, that's when I like to kind of take people down a rabbit hole to make sure it squeezes out a lead. But I totally agree with you. Yeah. I mean, especially Sometimes. like local, yeah, local community stuff, you know, like being involved in the community. I had mentioned BNI, which is like, uh, a smaller networking group in your yeah. local community where you're talking with 25 business. other. I mean, yeah, you and I have met networking through. International. That, that's kind of how you and I met through an entrepreneur group. Same kind of thing. Like get out yeah. there, shake hands, be involved in your community, especially on home services. I mean, your home services, you're tackling your local market. Community mm-hmm. is everything. I can get away with not so much community now because like we do everything kind of worldwide. Yeah. But like when you're trying to do Sally Sue and you know, the town over, like it's super important that you're engaged in your community hundred percent. Yeah. I I'd agree with that. I, I want to be known in my community and, and uh, all of these tools help with that. You know, so many times we've taken remodelers, it doesn't matter, remodelers, kitchen cabinets, roofers, 
um, whatever the business is. And the only thing that we really had to do is figure out who the ideal client was. And everybody's got at least one in their pocket. Yep. There's one deal they did where they're like, oh, I wish we were clients. Yep. And so I go back to your question. Why? Well, why was that client so good? Where are they? Oh, yep. they're in this other neighborhood. It's called Bridgeview. Oh, Bridgeview. Yep. Have you done another work there? Oh, I'd love to do more work in Bridgeview. Well, why don't we just turn your truck around and start doing stuff in Bridgeview? Start marketing in Bridgeview. Start, and then of course that you know from an SEO side or any of these online things, you start to focus there. And guess what happens? You're going to get more business there. Yeah. Another thing is too. I think what's worked for me. So I have a painter that paints my house like once every five years. Mm. He's a little bit under market, just a really great guy. Like I trust this guy with my kids. He's a, he's amazing. And on my local Facebook neighborhood group, I'm, I'm only in a place of 70 homes. I get all the time. Somebody know a good electrician. Does somebody know a painter? Right. He did such a good job for me. I'm always like, you know, call him, you know, call Tom TA painting. Like he's amazing. I post that there. What happens? There's like all these other eyes watching. Hope it. Tom's listening right now. He's yeah. Like, Tom oh. owes me like, he owes me. Tom owes me big time. Um, but I'll tell you, like, I see there was a year, I swear, from like June until the end of fall, he was in my sub every single day. <laughs> and I think because again, you li- I live in a, a sub of 70 homes that kind of all look alike. Yeah. People are probably HOA? like, if it, yeah. And they're probably like, if it's good enough for Wes and he's kind of an asshole or digital guy yeah. or whatever, it's good enough for me. But I yeah. think that can play out through any other neighborhood. It absolutely does. Yeah, there's sites and, like next door and things that do that, and it's it's a magnifying uh, a megaphone for your services yeah. if you do well. And that's yeah. where I think the Google reviews. You know, please leave a Google review, and then like you do really good work, and, and get somebody emotionally connected. Like I don't want a referral fee from him. I just, I just care that he's going to go out and and do good, do work, good work for somebody. Yeah, because he did for me. And like, that's a win for me. And I think if you can make that type of impact with your customer going above and beyond, man, it just pays itself back in spades and it's free. It's free to spend anything. So it's funny you say free because just as, just as you were saying that I was, uh, I like to think about having the world pay for my stuff. Yeah. And so how, you know, if I was to retitle this episode, like how can I have an unlimited marketing budget? When you said it's free. How, how, what can I do in my business from a marketing angle to have an unlimited marketing budget? I think it goes back to what you're talking about. Do what you say, like figure yeah. out your process. Number one, figure out a process. Mm-hmm. Make sure you have a repeatable process if you're hiring guys. Cause that, that was the biggest thing. Like my guys, you know, my guys did this. Well, like, where are they getting direction from? Do you have any systems, process, procedures in yeah. place? What is that? No, they're just paint the damn house. Like, it, more again, that. Yeah. Yeah. So for, for me, it's just, do, you know, be best in the world with what you do and treat people with respect and your company will flourish. Yeah. Like, I guarantee it. Yeah. Well, I think everybody that listens to this show already, you know, it, there's a filter to get to this podcast, right? It's a, it's called profit tool belt. So you have to be at the point in your business where you sort of stand up and stretch your back and go I'm trying to grow a business. What should I be doing differently? And then they catch on to this podcast, which is about the business of the contracting business. For some people, it's boring. They're never going to listen. Other people are like, yes, this is the stuff I need. This is you and I met through a group that does this. We talk about yep. the business of business, right? Yep. Um, when I look at having an unlimited marketing budget, I look at understanding my how much it costs me to get a customer and how yeah, much I allocate sure. back to marketing again. So if you've shown me a strategy that's going to work, let's let's just say to you, um, you said Google reviews to me and because you were my um, advisor on this. I came back and I'm doing Google reviews. I would say, how many more tools like Google reviews can we have? How much more money can I invest? If I know that every time I put $100 in Google reviews, we get a $1,000 return. That's an unlimited marketing budget to me. I Got can, it. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a million dollars if I had it. <laughs> yep. Because I know that I'm going to get 10 million back, right? Yep. Yeah, that's so that's, I mean, that's essentially where I live now, right? So what I personally do with my smaller team now is what we call it a blueprint mm. where we spend half a day with a business and really understand what are they trying to accomplish? Mm. What is their budget? How do we get that cost per lead? And again, help them build that predictable model to say, hey, for every time you exchange $54, we give you a qualified lead. At the end of the day, nobody really cares where it comes from, but that's that predictable model. And what happens in my world, and I've been in this world for 15 years, talk is cheap 
And there's a lot of agencies out there that say they can do this, that, and the other. We come in and we hold the agency's feet to the fire and make sure that's the right agency's working with the client. Right. That all that, you know, the owner of that organization or whoever's cutting the check can just count that for $54 in exchange, they're going to get a lead. And if they want to add crew, add staff, grow and scale, now you have that predictable model that you now can know to ratchet up, lever that up that can drive the business. So we help a lot of that in the beginning because other than that, it's just entrepreneurial chaos and you don't know where your next meal is coming from. And it's just, life's a lot easier if you can kind of back up. Yeah. But it's hard to trust. I mean, there's a lot of companies out there that are going to tell you exactly what you want to hear. We're going to do this and do that. I mean, every home services listening has been burned, I'm sure, at some point with a marketing company and or agency. Yeah, myself. They get tired. It's like, who do we trust? So what I do now on that side, I've been in that world. I know that pain point. Now we're on the other side of that helping clients get, get really clear. I want to go back to something because you and I understand the number, but people listening might not. And so I'd like to dig into this. You said $54 to pay for a lead. Now I know 54 is just, a, it doesn't matter if you said 54, 67 or 32, that number is just a number, but there still is a number for everybody. Yeah. So just for the sake of it, you said, let's say it's $54. What does that mean? What, what, what are we talking about? What critical number is that $54? Yeah, for example, so, you know, what is the call to action? What are you trying to achieve? So what I always talk about to a a home service or a business owner, do you want somebody to call you? Do you want an email inquiry? What are we trying to get the customer to do? Mm. So for example, if it's a home remote, let's just use my basement, for example, and say it costs 150 grand, right? Um, If I guaranteed you today, Dominic, that you're going to get the best customer, which is me, right? Or I was a nightmare. I don't know. Well, I was well you're a hundred and fifty thousand dollar customer, so you're a target. One hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollar customer, and it's a basement remodel. That's the number one service you're going after, and you need more of those to grow your business. Yeah. What are you willing to pay me today to guarantee to get you that opportunity? Right. And I start to go through and kind of go through this breakdown, and That's ultimately right. what it ultimately what it gets to it's what are you willing to part with? in order for that swing at the bat. Now, I used to play baseball. I'm not a baseball guy anymore, but out of 10, you know, out of 10, not, not even strikes. I mean, you're not going to close everything. So I like, I personally like to use four leads to one close piece of business. So that's about 25%. If I asked you, would you pay me 15 grand for that closed deal? People start to think and they're like, that's a lot of money. Sure it is, but you're going to get $135,000 $135,000 basement remodel. So it starts to get customers to understand their sales and marketing costs. And I use a method yes. of four. You need four swings at the bat to get that close. Mm-hmm. So can, and if they're like, I can't pay 15, but I can pay 10 or a thousand. Doesn't even matter. Just like this example, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We need four of those and we need to stay under that number. So the reality is that lead for, for basement remodeling yeah. might be 150 bucks. Sounds high. Like if you used off, off the rip, if I talked to a basement remodeler and said, we can get you leads for 150, like 150. Nah, I don't want to do that. I, I know another guy do pay. 132. How can you? Yeah, I'm not going to pay so 100. Much. I'm not going to yeah. pay 150 bucks for a lead. Well, four of them, you're going to pay 600 and get a $150,000 basement if we're marketing properly. That's what we say. Get out of your own way. That is like. Get out of your own way. So that's, I mean, that's really the model, you know, yeah. and what we do are like, you know, there's, there's different costs for different methods, and there's different varying degrees of success with every method. Mm-hmm. Again, you analyze the company and where they're at and what they want to do and kind of bring that all together. And then I try to help companies build that predictable flywheel because it's and fun. And that is a never-ending budget, a predictable flywheel. Yep. If I know that every time I spend $150 in marketing, I'm going to get a lead, but I need to spend it four times to get four leads and close one deal. So if everybody's following along, trying to make this as basic as possible, you're going to get a deal. Yep. So I know that when I invest in marketing, I'm going to get deals. Then the question becomes, how much can I invest in marketing and how fast? Yep. And then of course your next bottleneck, go fix that. Well, if your next bottleneck is we don't answer phone calls or we don't say the right thing on the phone call, well, that's two different paths. Fix that. Okay. Once you fix that, fix the next thing. And the next thing, and business is just a series of going back and finding your bottleneck and not running from it, but turning and facing it like a bully in high school and just walking right up to it. 
And guess what? It always backs up. It just, yep. it, it always goes away. Yep. Yep. Face that bottleneck and it's, you're going to be able to solve it. Yeah. There's always problems, right? It's just a matter of, I think, hooking up with the right. Ah, I get paid to solve problems. That's my, yeah. that's what a business owner does. Yeah. That's what we do. All of us, every single yeah. one of us. If, it, if anybody's listening here, you're really good at solving problems. That's why you own a company. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, Wes, this has been excellent. Really good. If, um, I like the fact that you had your had your own business and that you specialized in contractors. So all of this is relevant, super relevant. Uh, but if somebody wants to take the conversation further and find out more about you, where the heck do we find you? Yeah, so the website, stealthconsulting.com. Uh, we talked about LinkedIn. You can find me on LinkedIn, Wesley Matthews, Matthews with one T. Uh, yeah, happy to answer any kind of questions. I, I, I love this stuff. It's, it's fun. Yeah, and you're in uh, Detroit. I'm outside North. Detroit suburb. Yeah, I'm in a town called Novi Northville, Michigan, Southeast Michigan. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. great. I've had, I've had clients up in Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor's right there, 15 minutes from me. Kitchen remodelers out there go crushing blue. it. That's it's, one of the I examples mean, I gave of just point your truck in another direction. Just go to a different neighborhood, start focusing. <laughs> hey, I got to tell you a funny offline marketing story. I, I meant to tell you this. So we got a, a, up where I am. There's a, a company called Taves Roofing. Just a roofing company. No, they're one of the big players out here. But the other thing is, is that when there's an, an election going on locally, you cannot take down election signs. And that's that's the case in some different states and counties and provinces and, uh, up in Canada. Um, so you can't take down an election sign. So they came up with, during the election, vote for Taves roofing signs. <laughs> that's awesome. And they plastered. It's genius. Plastered. Uh, I, I know the region that they did it in. They just plastered it and you could not take it down. So you'd be driving down the street, you know, the boulevard, it's got, you know, whatever political party has got their signs up. Yeah. There's a blue party and there's a, a red party, you know, whatever their color is. Taves roofing had orange and it was like a field of poppies. It was everywhere. And Dude, I thought awesome. that is the most genius marketing hack I've ever seen. Because as soon as it said vote for Taves roofing, you could not touch that thing. That's genius. Yeah. Yeah. So all of these, I like, I like the guerrilla marketing. I like the clever marketing, yeah. low cost, high impact, high touch. And, and being in front of the right customer so that our name comes up when nobody else's does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you bring up interesting too, like with interest rates and everything that's happening too. Like I noticed that in my area, you talk about like regionally, like with interest rates so high, mm. um, you know, people looking to make that investment into their home and just looking at it from a different perspective, right? Like think about the cost to do business for me to move out of my home, buy a new one and do all this stuff. Like it's, probably a hell of a lot cheaper just to redo that yeah. room or, you know, put some new things in or redo the basement. Or I, I put a pool in my backyard during COVID. Nice. Uh, it was awesome. Like I told my wife, I'm like, I'm never going to move. I mean, you have, what's a house. It's just drywall. Like we can move walls and do things Yeah. of our area, you know? So I think it's, yeah, to your point of, you know, pay attention, think out of the box. And that, that's a really cool idea. Yeah. The, you, you and I have been around a long time. I can tell by the color of, beard that you and I have. We've been yeah. around for a little bit. Uh, yeah. So I've seen the economy go up and down and I'm going to see it go up and down again. Yeah. For people out there who are worried about how we open this show about what if the economy changes, don't run around, worry the skies going to fall uh, is going to fall on your head. If things change and they get bad, guess what's going to happen in construction? Yep. Just you absolutely nailed it. New home starts are probably going to slow down, but renovations, remodeling and repairs are going to go through the roof. Because yep. no, people won't move. They'll stay in place and they'll say, well, let's just move that wall. Let's add that thing. Let's upgrade the bathroom, not move where we live. And so yep. business isn't going to go away. It's just going to change. It's going to change. It's gonna, just going to change. So and it's always going to change, right? It's always changing, right? You can't be an entrepreneur or own your own company and just be stagnant. And what worked yesterday isn't going to continue to work forever. You know? What do you mean? We're not, are you saying that we don't hang telephones on walls anymore? Oh, my kids, I we actually went and saw a telephone booth or whatever. <laughs> When I was on a trip, and they're like, "What the hell? <laughs> what what the hell?" And I think the yellow pages was like stuck to it on a and little then, bungee. Yeah, and what's that? Like, right? what, what is going on? You know, like this yeah, is crazy. time travel machine. Yeah, Ripley's believe it or not. You know, uh, Wes, so good to have you on the show. We'll have you back again Thanks, to talk Simon. about more things in the future, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dominic. Have Thanks. a good one. Bye Thanks. Bye. Well, well, well. What did you learn from Wesley? And what can you put in place when it comes to marketing? I'll tell you, looking at my notes, one of the things that I wrote down is something I continue to hear every time we have an expert in the world of search engine optimization or the web in general. They always come down to saying, you got to get your Google reviews, respond to other people, get your Google reviews up. Speaking of reviews, 
uh, thank you to those of you who have left a review of the podcast. Um, it has increased lately, which is good because now that means other people will be able to find the show. And when they find the show, we're helping educate the world. You know, we're passing it forward. We're paying it forward. Uh, here's one of them. Let me, let me read this. Uh, it's titled simple processes. What Dom teaches isn't complicated. It's helping you implement it. A lot of these things I think I know until he shows me how to do them and why you need to do them. The podcast is great, but when he works in your business, he really helps you to sort out the questions you've always wondered, like what is my profit margin and how do I increase it? So that uh, that's from Big Coco 14. And Big Coco 14, you know who you are. Thank you very much for leaving that, that review of the podcast there because somebody else is going to see that. That's a trust breadcrumb that tells somebody else, hey, this is not a waste of time. Uh, so thank you for that. The next portion of the podcast, I want to simplify and solve a common problem. And here we are, the, the, the year has just clicked over and you're looking forward to another 12 months of running your business. If you want to make 2024 your best year ever, I've got a training class. I'd love to have you come to it. It's an hour. It's going to be an hour out of your schedule. Um, it's called how to make 2024 your best year ever. And we cover three main things. Uh, we cover mindset of a successful business owner overall. But inside that, we talk about time and time management. We talk about leadership and delegation. And then we talk about profits, money, and profitability. There is a lot of information boiled down into one hour, in one hour. So we, we truck pretty quickly through the slides. Um, make sure you're somewhere quiet if you're going to be on here so that you can take a lot of notes or take a screen capture with your phone or whatever whatever's going to help you. But you really should be on these webinars. Um, we get like hundreds of people registered for these and they are valuable. People take a lot of notes. People stay afterwards and ask questions. Like my presentation's an hour. The longest we've gone, it, you know, because people are asking questions is an hour and a half. You can log off anytime you like because it's just a Zoom call. But uh, we've had people on there for an hour and a half. And usually, you know, based on a question, I'll do a little bit more training. So if you do come, be ready to ask a question. Be ready to ask a question. Um, anyways, it's called make 2024 your best year ever. We're going to be going through the tools you need to make 2024 your best year ever, how to look forward into the year with confidence and understand where your bottlenecks are going to be, what you need to do to get around those bottlenecks and how to change your actions just a little bit. That's all you got to do is change them a little bit, change them a little bit. So you continue to move forward, right? So you want to launch the year, right? Join us on that pod on the, that's not a podcast. Sorry on the masterclass, which is a one hour masterclass. It's a zoom call. Um, just text me and say best year ever. How to make 2024 your best year ever. So just use the keywords best year ever. And you guys know my cell phone number. Just text me at 315-903-7853 and say best year ever. I think there's a drinking game going on. I've heard some people saying that, uh, every time Dom says his cell phone number, somebody has to take a drink. So uh, I'm glad to be part of that <laughs> game, whatever it's, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I want people to know how they can reach me. I don't want you to lose it. And then sometimes you're walking the dog or you're on the treadmill and you, you know, you, you don't have a pen. So by the time you get off and you go to the kitchen and you get a pen and a piece of paper, I want you to hear the number. Did you want the number? It's 315-903-7853. Good. Can't even do it with a straight face. Go ahead and text me there. Uh, and just say best year ever, and then we'll get you on the wait list to be registered for the class. And I look forward to meeting you. You know, the reason I do this is because one day I want to meet you. And uh, uh, for many of you, I have had conversations, which is fantastic. Hey, hey, how are you? Uh, but if we haven't had a chance to talk yet, shame on us. The, the whole reason I do this is because one day I'd like to have a coffee or a glass of wine across the table with you. It's just as simple as that. I really am an outgoing guy. Um, and yeah, that's what I want. So until then, this podcast is going to have to do, but you have a great day. Think about what you want to do in the business. Take some of Wesley's information, put it in place. Stay tuned for next week's episode. It's going to be a doozy and we'll see you there. Thanks.